Hey folks, we're going to start talking about uniform circular motion today. This last part of the forces unit is a section that used to be its own dedicated unit, so it might feel like a lot of information coming to you in a couple videos, um, but it's just adding on one last concept to your understanding of Newton's second laws. So in this first video, we're going to introduce what uniform circular motion is and some of its key properties. So uniform circular motion, which I will abbreviate UCM, uh, the requirement for it to be uniform is that it's constant speed motion. So there is uniform motion, circular motion, and there is non-uniform circular motion. We will specifically be studying uniform circular motion in this part of the course. So it has to be constant speed, uh, it, and that motion is motion that traces a circular arc. Um, and so circular motion doesn't mean necessarily that the object completely traces a circle. It just has to trace a shape that can be approximated as a circle. So if you are driving now and you drive on the rotary between Reading and Wakefield underneath Route 95, that is not a circle at all. It's kind of like a big triangle with three big turns. Um, but you think of a rotary as a circle. Well, we can approximate that rotary's turns as if they are a circle. So during the turning motion um, at some of the corners of that rotary, you are tracing out a circular arc. Just the other parts are driving mostly in a straight line. Um, so we will approximate a lot of things as circular. Now, constant speed motion makes it uniform. Um, if you have changing speed, then you have non-uniform, and we will address that in this unit as well as uh, another unit later in the course. If the motion is constant speed, then the motion is something that we classify as periodic. So you learned about the periodic table, um, and the word periodic in that case and in this case means that something repeats at regular intervals. For the periodic table, it's the physical and chemical properties of the elements that stem from the valence electrons or number of energy levels. Um, and for us, it's literal motion. The motion repeats at a regular interval. By interval, in this case, we mean time. So the first variable in uniform circular motion is period. This is something that we will apply to a couple different types of motion. The variable for period is the Greek letter tau. T-A-U is how we spell it. Um, and it looks like a, you know, a T with like a sideburns or something like that. So this letter tau is period. And it is the time for one cycle. Now, cycle is a very general term. Uh, it can mean a trip around in a circle. It can mean back and forth. It's the amount of time it would take for one repetition of something. Um, if you think about like a clock, the second hand, one cycle of a second hand is one minute. So the period of a second hand is actually 60 seconds. It takes 60 seconds to go all the way around. Um, now for something that like repeats many times, you can apply the following informal equation. Uh, if you're timing something and you want to know the period, well, you would record the number of seconds of the repetitive event, and you would divide that by the number of cycles. Um, and so that's an informal way. If you're measuring period, you can just measure the amount of time it takes for like 10 cycles and then divide by 10. All right, frequency. Uh, is another variable that's related to the periodicity of circular motion. The variable for frequency is a lowercase f. And this is the inverse or reciprocal of period. Frequency is the number of cycles per second. All right, so this is not how much time it takes for one cycle, but how many cycles can you fit into one second. Um, now, these two things, I forgot to do the units for period. The unit for period is the second. Oh, that's pretty easy. It's a measurement of time. It's just a measurement of the time for one event. 
frequency is the reciprocal, and so the reciprocal of seconds is inverse seconds. So seconds to the negative first, one over seconds. Those are possible units for frequency. The final one is hertz. If you study light and sound, um, then the frequency is usually reported in hertz. Um, all of those are units for frequency. Now, to apply this framework to frequency, frequency is literally how frequently something happens. So one way to calculate frequency is to count the number of cycles and divide it by the number of seconds it took for those cycles to happen. Um, and so if I did that for the second hand of a clock, right, the second hand takes 60 seconds to go all the way around, the frequency of a second hand would be 1 over 60, whereas the period of the second hand would be 60 over 1. What that shows us is what I just said, is that the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So this equation is in your equation sheet. The definition of period and frequency are not. Um, because the circular motion is uniform, these are values that we can use to determine things like speed and acceleration. Okay. Uh, the next part is the idea that this circular motion is constant speed. So I have this circle that I drew, and um, as something travels along that circle, it's traveling at constant speed. So I want to show you something. When the object is here, its velocity might be directed in that direction. Okay, so that's the velocity. Velocity has to have a direction to it, and so uh, when the object is here relative to the center of the circle, the velocity is pointed that way. Now, when the object is over here, if it's moving clockwise around the circle, uh, the velocity of this object is now directed here. So what I want you to notice is that the velocity is actually different from here to here because it's changed direction. However, the requirement for uniform circular motion is that the speed is the same. So if I'm drawing vectors, the length of the arrow will be the same, but the direction will have been different. Now, something that moves with constant speed, I can like analyze that or describe it by using the most basic of all physics equations for this course, which is speed equals distance divided by time. Now, I want you to imagine that this object is just repeatedly going around in circles. We have language for that repetitive motion. So if this object goes around this circle once, the amount of time that that takes is equal to the period. The other thing I know is from geometry, if you go all the way around one circle once, you have traveled a distance that's equal to the circumference of the circle. Um, so to say that another way, the speed of something moving in uniform circular motion is equal to the circumference divided by the period. So 2 pi r over tau is going to be the, um, the speed of an object moving in circular motion. So uh, the radius of this circle is something that we will refer to often in this unit. Um, and so as long as I know how far away the object is from the center of the circle, and as long as I know um, I can measure the period, those are the only two measurements I need to figure out the speed. So that is a, we would call that a linear speed. Um, we are probably going to call it more often tangential. Uh, because if you notice these lines that I drew, these arrows that I drew, they are tangent to that circle. Uh, the object is always directed straight ahead. It's always moving straight ahead, but it is turning for some reason uh, to stay in the circle. And again, we're studying kinematics now. Uh, we're like back before we know about forces. We'll cover forces later. All right, so something I want to point out is um, if the the object's changing its direction of motion, it is also accelerating. So constant acceleration is another property of uniform circular motion. And the reason it's accelerating is the direction of motion is changing. There's a pretty bad physics joke on the internet that um, renames the different parts of a car. 
and in the car when you're driving you have the steering wheel the gas pedal and the brake pedal and the physics joke is that all of those things should be called the accelerator because you can speed up you can slow down or you can change direction and those are the three ways to cause acceleration of an object anyway um, the acceleration has its own magnitude. This acceleration has a specific name. This, mag this acceleration is called centripetal. Uh, and that is because it is directed toward the center of the circle. And we're not really talking about why that is, but we're just going to, for now, talk about the fact that it does happen. That in order for an object to move in a circular path, it has to be accelerating toward the center of the circle that it's chasing. So if I go to my diagram up here, I can draw a second arrow for each one. And that arrow would represent the acceleration. So at every point along this uniform circular motion, the acceleration is directed toward the center. Um, and I tried to do my drawing very nicely, but I want you to see that there is a right angle uh, between the velocity vector and the acceleration vector. The velocity vectors are all tangential. They point tangent to the circuit, circle. The acceleration vectors are all radial. They point inward or outward. So in this case, they point inward toward the center of the circle. Um, and because they point inward, they also get the name centripetal. Uh, I'm happy to show you the proof of why this equation is correct. But the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration, so A sub C, is equal to V squared divided by R. So the speed of the object squared divided by the radius of the circle that it's tracing. Um, none of the vector notation is here. In fact, this whole set of notes is devoid of vector notation, even though acceleration and velocity are vectors that are happening. Notice that these vectors change direction. And so this equation is just like an equation for scalar quantities. The magnitude of the velocity, the magnitude of the acceleration, and the magnitude of the distance between the center of the circle and the object. Um, so those are the, the kinematics of circular motion. In another video, we'll cover forces again, but um, I'm going to have you work with uh, this stuff first. Thanks.